Listen up, you guys. Our house roof, as well as the garage roof, needed to be redone. That's a fact. And so at first, we considered going the traditional route, hiring out a roofing company to do the job. But after getting several bids, it quickly became apparent that such a project was gonna be outside of our budget. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Here, check this out real quick. That 88 cents is really important. Okay, so we'll leave the name of this company out because we want to protect the guilty. But here, here's your basic 10 year roof, 14,750. Next step up is 16,972. And the Whopper is $18,171.88. Seriously, what's up with the 88 cents? So I've been told that these prices are absolutely ridiculous. But given that Kylie and I got half a dozen different bids from different companies, and all of their prices were roughly within the same ballpark, I'm gonna assume that this is the going rate for roofing in Western Washington. At this point, my girlfriend Kylie and I decided to switch gears and roof both structures ourselves, DIY style. The only trouble with this plan is that neither of us had ever roofed before. Luckily, Kylie's dad knows a thing or two about roofing. He's also well connected with industry professionals. And most importantly, he was willing to help us because I like to record everything, I decided to complicate this job by filming it and slapping it on YouTube. And my hope is that maybe, just maybe, this video will serve other homeowners who are in the same boat as us. This is not to say that this video will teach you how to re-roof a house from start to finish, but it will give you a general understanding of what a competent re-roof looks like. So if you're in need of a new roof, definitely stick around. You're gonna wanna watch this entire video. Moreover, like every single trade, quality roofing follows some specific guidelines and practices that were completely foreign and confusing to me as an outsider. And if you've never roofed before, I'm gonna assume that you're just as clueless as I was in this area. So for all of you noobs out there, I made a concentrated effort to capture some of the finer points of roofing and thus bring you up to speed. My hope is that after watching this video, you'll at least be able to grasp some of the basics of roofing and will be able to follow contractors as well as product manufacturers when discussing roof replacement. Hopefully this alone will save you heaps of cash and prevent you from getting duped when shopping for a new lid for your home. I'd also like to say thank you to Pabco Roofing Products as well as Washington Cedar Supply for sponsoring this video. Pabco generously donated premium materials for this roofing job and Western Cedar Supply was kind enough to deliver. If you make it to the end of this video and find it to be helpful, please take some time and leave a comment below and let us know that you enjoyed this production. The last thing that I wanna mention is time code. This video is a long video and there's no way around that. Some folks are gonna to wanna to skip around. Maybe they're gonna to wanna to see how to determine roof pitch first and then another part next. And so to help you do that, I've included time code in the description below. So you can click on that time code and just navigate through the video a little easier. And on that note, enough babbling, let's hop to it. This morning I hopped online to do a little bit of research. And for this mission specifically, my question was, what are some of the sure signs that a roof needs to be replaced? So I cruised around and did the Google thing for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, something like that. And I came up with a pretty definitive list of signs that a roof needs to be replaced. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little list with me, I'm gonna climb up onto my roof and see if my roof needs replacing. Check out this thing. This right here is a warehouse ladder. And I got it because I'm not a huge fan of ladders. I don't really like being up in high places. Maybe I'm afraid of heights. And I felt like this would keep me a little bit safer. Fun little fact, when I bought this thing, I bought it used off Craigslist. I had no way of getting it to my house, but luckily it was only two miles away from my house. So what I did is I rolled it down the street. And while I was doing that, I got flagged by a neighborhood watch group because they thought I was stealing a ladder. Luckily, I film everything, and I filmed a little segment during the roll of myself being goofy. This is the new CrossFit. 
I gotta push this thing about two miles. And I was able to clear my name by sending in my footage and being like, guys, girls, I'm no crook. The point in all this is, you know, ladders aren't everybody's favorite. Make sure you stay safe and within your comfort zone. And actually on that note, if you want to just find out about whether or not your roof needs replacing, but you don't actually want to climb on your roof, it's totally acceptable to get some binoculars or maybe a camera with a zoom lens and inspect your roof from the ground. It's never good when the first thing you find on your roof is just a random nail. I better put that in a safe spot. This roof has definitely seen better days, that's for sure. The first thing that becomes apparent is what the heck is this thing? Whoever re-shingled this garage edition didn't do a very good job. Look at this thing. So we have like some kind of repair gunk. All of this is bubbled. And looks like maybe Elmer's glue was used to glue it on. That definitely needs to be replaced. We have big marks like this. That's probably not done properly. Okay, here's our list. Let's just roll with it. Cracked, curled, or missing shingles. Well, right here, look. Cracked shingles for sure. Missing shingles right here. So check. Curled. I'm not seeing curled shingles over here per se, but bald spots where granules are missing. There sure seems to be plenty of those. Look at that. Right there. That is one shingle that doesn't work. Excessive loss of protective mineral granules. That's kind of like the same thing, isn't it? Look at that. That shingle is pretty much bald. Then we have all sorts of like old rusty nails sticking out. I'm gonna take a wild guess and guess that that's not really good for the sake of waterproofness. Look, I just spotted something. So in the gutter, we have lots and lots of sand. And this is basically shingles failing right here. So if you see that in your gutter, it's not a good sign. Here's another view of the garage addition. Man, whoever re-shingled that did a piss poor job. I mean, just, here, let me point out some other flops. Basically, every six inches there's some sort of repair. They didn't even bother to cut these shingles accurately. They're just haphazardly cut. I mean, what is that? Seriously, what is that? I'm no roofing expert, but that just doesn't look good. When I look across to the main house from the garage, I can see right away that there's some shingle curling going on. You know, if you look really closely at those shingles, you can see that the edges of them are starting to fold up. You can also see some dark spots, some discoloration. Here's the list again, and all those things are on the list. In addition to the curling, I also see some broken shingles and I know that's not a good sign. Neighbors are getting new roofs. Now this bullet point I thought was kind of funny, but the thought behind it actually makes sense, and that is that houses generally get built around the same time, and so if a bunch of your neighbors are getting new roofs, this could be a very good indication that your house is due next. You've already been on the roof with Sergey, but this is when you know your roof really needs to be replaced. You can see up here some lots of dark spots and mold, 
which means that essentially the roof is leaking. All of that is water damage. And so our shingles are literally failing. And as a result, our roof is leaking. And that also means that we're probably gonna have to replace this top sheet, this board. So under the shingles, we're probably gonna have to take down some wood and uh, replace it. So the garage roof is definitely overdue. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, for sure. And the last, most definitive reason why we need a new roof is because when it rains, the garage literally fills up with water. Check it out. So there's that corner that we talked about earlier. The water seeps in through the gnarly shingles on the roof of the garage. And then it permeates down through the roof and the walls. And as a result, the concrete pad has about two inches of standing water on it. That's a full five gallon bucket of water that leaked in through a faulty roof. Perhaps since I'm up here, this might be a great time to discuss different shingles. On this roof, on the house, as well as the garage, you see what's called a three tab shingle. And the reason that it's called a three tab is because it has three tabs. And three tab shingles are kind of like the old standard. More and more homeowners are starting to move to what's called an architectural shingle because it protects the house better and it lasts longer. So why choose one or the other? In a nutshell, architectural shingles cost a little bit more up front, but they last about twice as long they weigh more and they protect your house better. So architectural shingles or dimensional shingles, they're gonna give your house more of a three-dimensional look. They're not gonna lay flat like three tabs. And this will actually raise the property value of your home. You'll be able to resell your home for more money. Like I already mentioned, they weigh more and they're thicker, which means that gravity presses them down against the house better. And this is gonna help protect your home for years to come. So long story short, while you might have to fork over a little bit more money for a dimensional shingle, your roof is gonna last twice as long and in the end, you're gonna save a bunch of money. Architectural shingles are quickly becoming the standard and if you look around, you'll notice that many of the new homes around you that are getting re-roofed are no longer using three tab and they're moving over to laminate shingles, dimensional shingles, architectural shingles. Again, all those three words can be used interchangeably. So here's another pro tip. Every single reputable shingle company will have something that looks like this. This right here is a sample shingle board. Now these three boards are made by Pabco. They represent their Pabco Prestige shingles. These are the shingles we're gonna be using on our roof. And the reason these things are so important is because they help you select the color of shingle that you're gonna slap on your house. Now this is actually a much bigger decision than just selecting a color because shingles remain on your roof for 30, 40, 50 years. And you wanna be absolutely positive which color you select so that you're not kicking yourself in the butt for 50, 30, 40 years. Like, ah, I should have selected a different color. So the trouble with shingles is when you go to select them, most of the time you're doing this indoors. Maybe this is a showroom or a shingle supply store, a hardware store, that kind of thing. And indoor lighting is quite a bit different than outdoor lighting. So what you really wanna do is you wanna take these boards home with you, make sure that they match the color of your house. But more than that, you wanna put them up against your house and leave them there for a few days and periodically come outside and check on the color of the shingle. And what you'll notice is that a lot of these colors will change throughout the day. So maybe this oak wood, which is kind of a brown color, maybe in the morning it's gonna look a little bit more yellow. And at midday, it's actually gonna look more brown like it's intended. And then at dusk, it's gonna look slightly different. So do your due diligence, get a couple of these boards, lean them up against your house, check on them periodically. You'll be happy you did. 
Alright. Let's do this shit. Alright, grab the tape measure. Where is it? Right over there. Let's go measure our roof. You can leave the level for now. Okay. So this is what I did. Train professional, you guys. This is what... Why don't I help you? How about that? This reading is 122 inches. 164. easiest way to find the pitch of your roof is simple geometry. You're finding the rise over the run. So how much the roof goes up over one foot. So we measure one foot on our level. We put the level, the bottom of the roof. So we're measuring from the bottom of the level. Find where it's level, the bubble in the middle, and then measure down to the roof. This is the vertical component six inches the horizontal component is 12 inches so our roof for every one foot it travels horizontally it goes up six inches so the pitch of the roof is 612 this isn't an exact science not down to the millimeter just a rough estimate <laughs> I mean, this is a service that we provide. It makes life way easier on the roofers so they're not having to lug the shingles up. One or two bundles at a time up a ladder because nobody wants to do that. Kills your body, kills your, kills your spirit throughout the day. And uh, yeah, it'll save you money. It'll make life really easier on the roofers. Each one of these packages weighs about 80 pounds. And I don't know how many packages we have here, but it's a lot. So the fact that they were able to drop right on the garage is a huge, huge time and back saver. Unfortunately, the boom couldn't come anywhere near the main house, and so I'm gonna have to do those by hand. But not to worry, that's gonna be my daily exercise for that day. So I'm taking a negative and turning it into a positive. This seems like a fitting time to quickly touch on how and why Kylie and I decided to roof with Pabco products. And it's not what you might think. It's not because Pabco hooked us up with free material. That came later. A few months ago when I was doing my initial Googling, 
I wanted to understand what makes a good shingle. As is often the case, the more I read, the more confused I became about the topic of shingle selection. For every opinion pointing in one direction, there's an equally valid opposing view. Furthermore, when you pair these differing opinions with the sheer volume of roofing products available to consumers, being overwhelmed is pretty much guaranteed. Eventually, I was able to identify five key characteristics that make up quality shingles. And these traits are, number one, wind resistance. Can shingles withstand high winds? I'm talking 100 plus miles an hour. Number two, solar reflectance. Do shingles absorb or reflect heat? Preferably, you want them to reflect heat so as to keep your house cooler in the summer months. Number three is impact resistance. Can shingles withstand extreme weather, i.e. rain, snow, hail, etc., as well as other falling objects? Pine cones, rocks, tree branches, that kind of thing. Trait number four is algae resistance. While algae resistance doesn't really pose immediate dangers to a roof, it is unsightly and could decrease your property's curb appeal. Number five, fire resistance. Is the shingle flammable or not? Most shingles in the modern era are fire resistant, and that's a good thing. Modern laminate shingles, aka architectural shingles, satisfy all these norms and are thus the most common choice that homeowners reach for. That said, not all shingles are made the same. Like literally everything else in this world, some brands produce better products which last longer than others. In my research, Pabco roofing materials were consistently cited as top notch. When I finally visited their website, I discovered that Pabco is a family owned business based in Tacoma, Washington. Guess who else lives in Tacoma? So I chose Pabco because they are local, they make their products domestically, and they have a great reputation. And when they eventually agreed to sponsor this video, that only sweetened the deal. As an added bonus, the Pacific Northwest is a really rainy place. And I thought that a company which runs its operations here must know how to make a good rainproof product. When I asked Pabco about this specifically, they said this. Tacoma, Washington is a, is a rainy place, so we, we can handle that. We know how to do that. We're at Arizona, we're in Texas, we're across the Pacific Rim, Thailand, New Zealand. So we're made to perform anywhere, really. We can handle it. The shingles that Pabco sent over are called Pabco Prestige. They are a premium heavyweight laminate shingle that's rated for 50 years of life. Prestige shingles come in 16 different colors. After running some of the tests that I discussed previously, we chose weathered wood as our color. Finally, Prestige shingles feature something called Algae Defender. An Algae Defender is basically a proprietary mixture of copper particles, which helps to fight algae and mold. Uh, basically, it prevents black streaks from occurring on the lid of your house. If you recall, our current roof has heaps of black spots on it. So theoretically, these new shingles will prevent that from happening in the future. Maybe if YouTube still exists in half a century, I'll do a follow-up video to see how the Algae Defender performed. If you'd like to see said video, smash the like button and or leave me a comment below. Another area where you can save a lot of money and time is to hire a dumpster from the city. So this right here is a 15 quart dumpster. It was brought here on a truck. This is a service that you pay for. Uh, depending on where you live, the cost may vary. Here in Washington, it costs about 500 bucks. But it's a one and done kind of unit. So when we re-roof the house over there, we can take all the waste and throw it in this one bin and then the city picks it up and I actually did a price comparison and to rent a trailer and then go dump waste on your own would cost a few hundred dollars more so while this is a big expense it actually saves you heaps of dough now obviously if you have access to a trailer or you have a friend that you can borrow a trailer from that might be your best bet. But if you don't, this thing makes life easy. Because like I already mentioned, you just throw your waste byproducts in this thing. 
So you only have to move it once and then the city comes and picks it up and they're responsible for the dumping and the price includes all of that. So all you have to do is rent this thing, they slap it on the street for you and the rest they take care of and that's a beautiful thing. These old guys just work me under the table, hands down. So check it out. How many you want? As they lay this stuff down, they make a flap that overlaps just like that and now all the seams are gone the right way we covered over the roof vent holes and then we put big red X's and boxes around where the holes are because we don't want somebody to accidentally step here and fall through hurt themselves
Why not? The rod does it. Huh? So that's what you were telling me. That's how you measure with your hammer, huh? Yep. It's not an exact science, I think. It's just kind of a... Oh, it is. Yeah. Right there, five and five eighths. Mm -hmm. You measure that, it'll be five and five eighths, and you just hook that on. Gives you a five and five eighths better. Careful. I'll edit that part out too. <laughs> Anything that's not graceful. those two by fours up there mm -hmm. you're gonna take one and set it flat like that mm -hmm. and then like these here you got one flat against the two by fours oh. then you set one back a little bit behind it then you go straight up okay okay the nails. Oh, bad one. I'm just, I'm reading. just keeping barren. So I make sure that the shingle side is down. And then when you put the pan down, I just toss it to him. That way he doesn't have to get him. The Respire product that they're using up on the roof is a synthetic product. It's a breathable underlayment that we use. This is different from our, your typical organic felts that you see out um, in the industry. It's lighter weight than your typical uh, organic felt products. This allows the contractors to bring it up on a ladder easily. Um, it is a slip resistant product, so up on a roof it's safer to work with than uh, your typical organic underlayments. Uh, organic underlayments typically 
really get wet and very slippery for the contractors. So this is a much uh, safer application for them while they're up on steep slope pitches. So you may be wondering why we took the felt off the garage and left it on the house. And there's a simple explanation, and that is that on the house, the felt was in really good condition. So we left it on because it's gonna add another layer of protection on the roof. Whereas on the garage, the felt is kinda garbage. So it only makes sense to get rid of it. Just like Avery's doing right there. Into the neighbor's yard. <laughs> Early Christmas present. <laughs> the, the best thing to do with your hose is nail it. <laughs> so what's this California Valley? All right, see this piece there we put in? Mm -hmm. We brought these shingles all the way up through the valley, at least eight inches past the valley. That's gonna help it not ever leak. Then you put what we call a bleeder strip in which goes this way, and then you take these corners of the shingle. And you put it right there on the edge of the bleeder. And you don't nail in the valley. In the valley don't like nails. It'll just make it leak if you have a nail in the valley. And so that eight inch section that you just mentioned has no nails in it anywhere because... Yeah, up at the top. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. But water will never pool there. It'll only yeah, it's gonna, theoretically pool. It'll just drain down. It won't. Now, if you have a lot of debris up in here because mm -hmm. you don't clean your roof off, and in the wintertime it could make an ice dam like that so always keep the debris off your roof at all times how often should a roof be cleaned well depends on where you live depends on how many trees are. you got this tree you get a lot of debris on it yeah we do so twice a year three times a year yeah as needed well you don't the only thing you don't really want to do little stuff like that uh -huh. you want to come up Clean it off all the time. Up, yeah. But when it starts getting piled up, yeah. you definitely want to get it off. Be nice. Yeah. Don't cut the hose. Yeah. It's good time if you do. <laughs> <laughs> So we also have to roof up to here to that point where she's sitting. Mm -hmm. Go to that side, roof it up to that point. Mm. Measure it off, get it straight, mm -hmm. and then we can go up. Go we hand. just can't go up now because if that doesn't come up together, mm. it's going to be off and it's going to look really horrible. So you've adapted your technique from the other side of the house because of this piece that I'm sitting on. Right, because yeah, we didn't have. Yeah. But once you get up to this spot, once then Once I get up to that spot same. and that side yeah. up, then we'll chalk line it, make it straight, and then we'll rock and roll. And these little remnant pieces that you're cutting, these guys right here, are they good for anything? They are. Uh, some, most of them can be used on that rake mm -hmm. side over there. Gotcha. And sometimes, oh, uh, you can see how
get up to this section, you have to cut that pattern again, the one that you started with over there. Yeah. Uh, or, as I was wrapping the we can just cut the, just cut the bad shit out. Oh, Jesus. One, one sheet. Might do it, but just leave it the way it is. Cut what out? You want to just... The are going this way. We can cut the two feet out of this all the way across. And instead of getting three sheets, only get... Two? One. Two, whatever it takes. Two feet is 16 feet. That's not 16 feet. Nope, it's four, less than 14. So you can see that this is one of the major problem areas. This is probably why the garage is leaking right here. Because the shingles were failing. It was getting this wood rotten, or moldy at least. And water was seeping in through there and pooling up in the garage. So we'll have to take this up and replace it. Look at this thing. It's terrible. Look at that. That's that wood from the garage roof. It's actually got mushrooms growing on it. <laughs> we got a skylight in here, look. So that part right there definitely needed replacing, and that's exactly what we're doing. What do you guys charge to do ours? <laughs> One roof a year max. <laughs> sake you have the old three tap shingles and then you have the new and improved 
architectural shingles right there. So new, old, new, old. Point it at your dad, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, but I don't want to. It, it doesn't shoot unless you push it down. Maybe you do the first one. I'll do the one when it's just farther from the edge. Cowboy hat out of my face. How about this in your face? <laughs> How about this in your face? <laughs> All right, Kylie, your turn. All right, Kylie. There you go. It's right on the car. Right there? Yep. Pull the trigger and push it down. No, pick it up. Yeah. Now push. Pull the trigger? Yep. Hit the car. Hit the car. Yeah. So what you do is you go poof, like that. Just kind of like you're punching it. Not real hard. Just punch it. Okay. Now she's making bread. Hold on. Right. Keep your hand on it. Keep your hand on it. Ready? Yeah. Got the trigger? Yeah. Okay. The teacher becomes the student. Wait, the student becomes... <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. See this? I'm gonna show you how to replace a roof like a boss. Ready? New. Old. New. Old. New. There you have it. And if you have any room left over in the dumpster, you can do something good for your neighbors in the neighborhood and pick up some miscellaneous junk that some unsavory characters left for other people to clean up.
So if you have any room left over in your dumpster, maybe go around and ask your neighbors if they want to get rid of anything. You could also go and pick up any miscellaneous junk in your neighborhood. This will make you feel even better about yourself. It's a good deed. And um, it'll help your neighbors forgive you for all the hammering you've been doing over the last couple days. Well, boys and girls, we've reached the end. That's how the cookie crumbles. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that maybe you even learned some stuff. If you did, please leave me a comment below and share with me what you learned. I would also like to thank our sponsors again. Thank you to Pabco, especially to Kevin and Mary. You guys are absolutely wonderful and it was a pleasure dealing with you. Also, thank you to Washington Cedar Supply Co. The delivery was amazing. You single-handedly saved my back, so for that I'm eternally grateful. And who can forget, Matt and Darren. We couldn't have done this without you guys. Finally, Isaac, Randy, Avery, Joe, thank you so much for your help. We really, really appreciate your friendship and your willingness to help us. And on that note, I think that's it. That's it, that's all for now. Look at that. That's proof that it rained last night. It rained pretty darn hard. Usually when it rains this hard, the garage floods. But not no more, at least I hope, because we have a new roof. So let's see how it weathered. Oh my goodness, will you look at that. Look at that. So the last time I showed you this corner, that right there had inches of water on it. And now as you can see, it's bone dry. I mean, look at that. That makes me so happy. Up above, you see that same corner where the wood used to be rotten and wet. It's been replaced. It's beautiful and new, and most importantly, it's working. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've never been more happy. And the fact that we did this ourselves with our own hands, oh man, that just adds to the entire experience. Mm. I've never felt more accomplished in my life. Okay, maybe that's not true, but this is at the top for sure.